Okay, so I wanted to wait at least the weekend to come out with my review because, you know, I actually wanted people to go watch the movie before coming here, which in hindsight was a pretty dumb move on the YouTube side of things, seeing how everyone and their mothers and even uncontacted indigenous tribes have come out of the woodworks guns a with their reviews. Mostly bad, but that's to be expected. And it's probably even more expected that I will be joining the slander in regards to the Marvel's newest flop and much anticipated cinematic release, The Marvels. And I will, more than likely for the majority of this video. But that doesn't mean we didn't have highlights here. This is no Ant-Man quantum dumbass, or Thor love and flop, or Doctor Strange mom, where I truly felt I had wasted my own money, my own time, and my own sanity watching those films. And I might as well just put it up for public scrutiny now, but The Marvels was probably my fourth favorite film post-Endgame. I know, it's crazy, but I mean, look at this list. What a bunch of stinkers. And if it wasn't for the character of Shang-Chi's dad, this movie probably would have even gone above that. Alright, that's actually a lie. Shang-Chi was actually pretty good. The point is, before I get all of the angry comments coming to insult my intelligence, eyesight, and connection to common sense, just because it's ranked relatively highly on a list of nine films post-Endgame, this isn't your grandma's MCU anymore. And while The Marvels is number four on this list, the movie as a whole was still relatively shit from a plot and narrative standpoint, character writing, character motivations, interesting villains, CGI, especially when it comes to the background and setting, and most importantly, the inability to again, write meaningful stakes that aren't abolished and thrown aside halfway through the movie, basically your typical MCU problems post Endgame, either on the big or small screen side of things. Classic. But again, as mentioned before, there are highlights, or maybe just one. And while this is definitely going to be a review of pros and cons, it's pretty insane that we're not on the same page that no, this isn't the worst MCU movie of all time. But in order to get to the pros and cons, let's talk. The Marvels picks up following everybody's favorite Marvel darling, Brie Larson, aka Captain Marvel, aka Plank, after the events following the first film. What? Oh yeah, this is gonna be rough. Alright, let's try this again. The Marvels picks up following everybody's favorite Marvel darling, Brie Larson, aka Captain Marvel, aka Plank, after the events of the first film, WandaVision, and Miss Marvel, two fleshling Disney Plus series with Miss Marvel being the lowest streamed and watched Disney Plus series, with in hindsight realizing that was probably more due to the target demographic of 13 year olds than actual quality, and WandaVision who just luckily stumbled into the bar first so she got a lot of attention until the lights came on at 2 a.m. and you realize you've been dancing with a potato. Anyway, meet new Cree overlord Tom Hiddleston's wife and the reason why this movie exists in the first place. I truly do not remember her name and I'm not going to be looking it up. If I continue to call her Lady Ronan throughout the rest of this video, it is what it is. So Lady Ronan is now pissed at Captain Marvel, who the Kree now know as the Annihilator after she basically obliterated their society after destroying their AI running the ship the Supreme Intelligence and making their home planet of Hala a dying planet and pretty much unlivable. And don't worry, if you missed all of that, it's because it was literally in a 15 second mid-dream sequence. Solid. At this point, the trailers pretty much lay out the rest of the movie. Lady Ronan seeks revenge on Plank by opening up boom tubes to her most valued homes in order to steal their natural resources to restore Hala. Miss Marvel, Captain Marvel, and Monica Marvel get locked in their power switch loop. A teamwork montage ensues, shenanigans, jokes, Nick Fury being a clown character post endgame, the villain becomes redeemable at the end, our heroes save the day, set up for the next MCU product, I mean project. Same terrible plot beats, half-assed and almost non-existent character growth. We've seen it all before. Oh, 
Lady Ronan also needs Kamala Khan's bracelet in order to gain more power or something. I don't know, it's not really explained. The power scaling of these bracelets is just as vague as ever and we as an audience and honestly I'm sure the people that write this shit really don't know the power scaling of these bracelets either. But if I keep doing this, I'm just going to get depressed and forget about the good aspects of this movie. Or good aspect of this movie. So let's just get to... Okay, well, I guess this is probably what the majority of you have been waiting for. The highlight. The glimmer of entertainment that actually didn't make me want to ask the employees for a gallon of bleach halfway through the movie. And I won't blue ball you. It was easily Kamala Khan. With the addition of her family, but I'm just going to engulf their whole crew into one big pro box. As mentioned before, as someone who didn't watch Miss Marvel because I don't have a daughter and I'm not a 13 year old girl, I basically had no connection, love, or even interest in the character of Miss Marvel. And that's not to say that there was disinterest or disdain there, it was just pure apathy on if the character existed, cool. And if she didn't, also cool. Which makes it sound much worse than disinterest itself, but that's not the case here. I can't believe I'm about to say this, but Kamala Khan is funny. Probably the first time I've laughed out loud on multiple occasions in an MCU project post-Endgame, let alone from one sole character. She was a fangirl done right, and while I understand how that can be annoying at times, especially to the boomers of the crowd, everyone has their idols, the people they look up to, and when your literal life gets tangled with that person and an actual bond starts to form, I can't imagine that type of excitement especially when I look back at a 16-year-old grader. Plank also has way more to do this go-around. She's not the complete unlikable dipshit she was introduced as in Captain Marvel. And while I'm going to explain more in the con section of this video, as someone who, in a way, does see the potential of this character in theory and with the addition of historical executional levels of character writing, I appreciate that she was actually written with a semblance of what a normal person would actually act like. The chemistry between the three leads all around is actually pretty good, with their inside jokes and one-liners hitting around 35% of the time, and it was much better than the trio of Thor, Lady Thor, and Emotionless King Val. In a way, it was kind of refreshing, but also expected, if that makes sense. But of course, I could just go back to Kamala and just simply how likable she was, making it pretty impossible to not reflect and balance off her chemistry and charisma. Again, that one highlight. So now it's time for... So I haven't really watched many reviews. I don't really watch a lot of them before I come out with my own review. But I imagine it's a lot of hating for the sake of hating. But I will say that my biggest issue, and I believe the biggest issue holding this movie back from actually being kind of good, is the editing. With the movie having been delayed, I think, three, four times, you definitely feel that. The Marvels has a runtime of around an hour and 45 minutes, and it feels like there were 30 valuable minutes left on the cutting room floor. With the storyline of Captain Marvel, the Annihilator, taking the biggest blow by far. You would think with the villain's revenge arc and motivations being the restoration of her home planet, the one the Annihilator destroyed, therefore personally destroying the planet she holds dear would be fleshed out in more than just a half-assed dream sequence. It goes back to the fact that the studio executives at Marvel had no faith in a character they forced to the forefront of a fandom in the middle of witnessing what was and is the greatest cinematic achievement of all time, therefore turning what should have been a pure sequel in order to try to restore some good faith and connection within the fandom and character. Instead, what we the dumb blokes making the decisions decided to do was shoehorn two characters that, quite frankly, no one really cares about. And while yes, for one of those characters it happened to work out, it only worked out because of the abomination of pacing this movie was. The Annihilator storyline was easily, and I mean easily, the most interesting storyline, 
and it seems like the director and writers of the film had less of an interest in it than an 11 year old at church like what a bizarre choice and because of that lady ronan comes off as one of the most uninteresting villains in all of marvel like we're speaking all time her villain is personally entangled with captain plank she has a personal vendetta against her some could even say for a good reason but yet throughout this video i don't even remember her name really highlighting the character fumble that she was and this is just a quick quick side note for everyone that actually made it through secret invasion or even know that show existed why the fuck are scrolls even here on earth when it seems like they can just go to any other scroll refugee camp that they can just live as themselves i'm pretty sure that was graphics whole issue in the first place i couldn't believe what i was even witnessing like what the fuck why is talos not there why isn't graphic there why did talos have to die why was that show even made in the first place overall the marvels like in the title of this video was pretty bad with an unexpected highlight again the main issue being a lot of missed and wasted potential and opportunities due to one of the most poorly paced movies I have ever seen. Mixed with the inability to have creative writing and direction from the director in order to fill in those gaps which is becoming more and more of the norm, and the lack of faith from a studio to make a pure sequel to a character they had no problem throwing in my face in the first place, but now seem to have regrets. <sighs> At least we can all look at that post credit scene and try to convince ourselves with a nice, nice bottle of alcohol that better days are on the horizon. Of course, as always, I want to thank you guys for watching the video and make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. I'm going to keep this outro pretty short, but I do have some more of the Marvels content coming pretty soon. Like I said, this movie didn't really have to be as bad as it was. True Miss Potential. I did like Kamala Khan though, that is pretty genuine. The Hunger Games prequel is also a thing. Don't forget that, I'm pretty sure that's this weekend. Jin B and Loki finished this week or last week, so I'll be dropping reviews on those, at least Jin B in a couple days. Those were W shows, like actually W shows. But again, I wanna thank you guys for watching the video. Make sure to like and subscribe, but otherwise, that's all the words I got for you today. Bye.